This is every feature that you need to know about TypeScript all in one video. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript that adds static typing, and it's been steadily growing more and more popular in recent years. TypeScript is great for building and maintaining large scale code bases, where the readability of your code is more important than how quickly you can write it. TypeScript compiles or transpiles down to JavaScript. So you can use TypeScript anywhere that you can use JavaScript. So on the front end with a web browser or on the back end with a JavaScript runtime such as Node.js. That makes TypeScript a full stack programming language. That is, it can be used across the entire tech stack. Here is a function in TypeScript. It has a function name and then accepts arguments inside these brackets. This argument is of type string and the function returns a string. The last part here can actually be left off and it usually is because TypeScript can actually look at the body of your function and it can infer or it can work out that it returns a string. So you don't usually need to add this return type explicitly. That leads to function looking like this, which is what you'll more commonly see. You can add comments in TypeScript with the same syntax as with JavaScript. So that's two forward slashes for a single line comment or one forward slash and an asterisk for multiple line comments. Variables in TypeScript are declared with either var, const, or let. Var declares a variable globally or locally scopes to an entire function. Let allows you to declare variables that are limited in scope to the block, statement, or expression where they're used. And const is like let, but the variable's value cannot be reassigned. In general, these days you'll see developers sticking to let and const. Var just exists mainly for historical reasons. TypeScript is called TypeScript because it adds types to JavaScript. So let's have a look at a few of those types next. You've got primitive types like number, string, and boolean, and they are declared like this with a colon over to the variable name and then the type name. Although just like most strongly typed languages, if you are assigning a value at the same time as creating the variable, then you can actually just leave off that explicit type declaration and TypeScript will infer what type that is for you. You can also define your own types in TypeScript. There are two ways to define your own types. Interfaces, which look like this. So this is an interface with a value property declared on it as a string. But also you can declare types with the type keyword, which looks like this. Notice the equal sign when using the type keyword, which isn't there with the interface method. Now, which of these two you use is basically up to you, and it is actually a source of some debate in the TypeScript community, so I'm not even gonna weigh in on that, but just be aware that both of these exist. For interfaces, they work just like interfaces in other object-oriented languages. They're primarily used with the implements keyword when declaring a class. So a class in TypeScript looks like this. It can have fields on it, which in this case are coming from the interface above, um, it also has a constructor and you can declare properties on it with the get and set keywords. So here I'm declaring a read-only property with the get keyword. You can also define functions in here like this. Functions in TypeScript are first class citizens and that means that a function can be passed around just like any other variable and a function signature is treated just like any other type. So here we're defining this type as a function signature. And then when we declare a variable with this function signature as its type, that variable is basically a function. So this is saying that this variable is a function type, which has one string argument and it returns a string. You'll often see developers in TypeScript declaring functions like this as variables instead of using the function keyword. Again, both are fine, just a matter of preference, just be aware of both of these approaches. It's not a huge amount of difference. You should probably learn both of these anyway because you will come across using the function keyword and you'll come across things being declared as variables. This one is quite a cool thing though because we've defined our variable here with this function signature and because functions are first class citizens, we can actually assign this variable a function that was declared with the function keyword. So this function here, I'm declaring with the function keyword, but I'll give it the same signature as this one above and then you can pass a reference to that function into this variable. So that variable previously had the inline function assigned to it. This is just a cool thing that you can do with a lot of high level functional languages like TypeScript. Okay, now let's look at some of the control flow statements in TypeScript. First up, this is an if statement. The condition inside here uses double equals to assert a quality of two objects that are of different types but can easily be converted. And if we wanted to assert that both of these were actually strings, then we can use triple equals in here. So that's if statements. Another way of doing conditional logic is with the switch statement. The switch statement looks like this, and it uses the case keyword to define cases. Now, an important note here is that cases do not break out at the end of the case by default. 
So the code on your screen now will actually drop into the next case when it gets to the end of the first case. To ensure that it breaks out of the switch statement, we either need to return, continue, or use the break keyword like this. Right, that's control statements. Now let's look at loops and arrays. Arrays in TypeScript are declared with the square brackets like this. You can use array methods on them, and these are exactly the same as JavaScript. So we can use the filter function on an array to check for even numbers, for example, like this. We can also use the map function to map these functions into another kind of object, like this. If I hover over this as strings variable here, you can see that TypeScript has looked into the mapping function and actually worked out that this is now going to be an array of strings. So it's worked out what the mapping is actually doing. So that's pretty cool. Also, when we hover over the function name, you can see that the IDE gives us a load of information about the function signature of that map function, which is actually really, really useful. For instance, if you want to use something like the reduce function, I'm not convinced there is a single person alive who knows the function signature of the reduce function off by heart. So if you're using TypeScript, it basically guides you through how to write a reducing function like this, and it checks your work for you. So that's really, really nice, and it actually encourages you to use these kind of cooler functions in JavaScript or TypeScript. Also, while we're looking at arrays, let's look at loops in TypeScript. So here's an array of numbers. You can use for let of to loop through the items in an array, just like you can do in JavaScript. So this just prints each number to the console. You can also control that index manually like this. And again, just like in TypeScript, in JavaScript. You can also use a do while loop, which executes the code before doing the conditional check. Now this isn't particularly common, but there are some fun use cases for the do while loop. So it's still useful to know about. But again, this is basically exactly the same as in JavaScript. There's no TypeScript specific stuff going on in any of this. Right, let's look at a few things that you can do with types that make TypeScript unique. So one thing, cool thing that you can do in TypeScript is union types and intersection types. Union types are a way of declaring a variable that can be one of several different types. And this is really useful when a value might take one or more type in your application. So this function accepts both number and string types for its ID parameter, and the union is done with this bar character in the middle, which most of you will know as the or operator. So this is basically saying the type is a number or a string. That's a union type. An intersection type, on the other hand, is declared with the and operator, or the ampersand. So if we declare a type that has a name property and a different type underneath that has an ID property, then we can intersect these two types with the ampersand character to create a third type that contains both these two properties. So we can then use our new type to declare a const object and you can see that this object now has to have both ID and name because it came from that type. All right, the next feature of TypeScript, and this is probably a good point to remind you that if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button down below and let me know what you think of the video in the comments, good or bad, it's all good. I'll always reply to the comments as much as I can. Anyway, let's have a look at generics. Generic type parameters allow you to create reusable components that can work over a variety of types rather than a single type. So in this example, the identity function is using a type variable t to capture the type of the argument arg. That allows the function to return a value of the same type as its input. We can call this function like this, but defining what generic type should be. So in this case, it should be a string. Generics can also be used on types and interfaces. So this example defines a generic interface that has a field of type t. So you can see t here matches the t in the interface declaration. So if we use this interface with a string in here, like the above, then the field inside it will be a string. If we use it with a number, then the field will be a number and so on. Generics can also have constraints with the extends keyword. This function imposes a constraint on the generic type t, and it says that t has to have a length property of type number in order to be used with this function. So you can only pass generic types in here that contain this property. So I can use this function with a string because strings have a length property, but if I try to do this with a type that doesn't have a field called length, like for example, date, then I would get a TypeScript error. That's useful when you want to ensure that the function works only with types that meet specific criteria. Right, we're almost at the end now, but I'll quickly start a new file and show you a way to organize your types, namespaces. 
You can create a namespace in the file like this, and I'm going to export this namespace from this file using ES modules exports. Then inside the namespace, you can declare types, constants, classes, functions, anything you like, basically. The namespace is a really nice way of organizing them in TypeScript. So if I go to the bottom here, and I can do my namespace and then dot, and then I can access my function inside that namespace. So this is just a really nice syntactic sugar that TypeScript adds that helps you organize your types across multiple files in large projects. Okay, that's pretty much all we have time for, although it's certainly enough to get you started with TypeScript, but I did lie ever so slightly in the title because we haven't covered absolutely every TypeScript feature today. There are plenty of more advanced things that you can do in TypeScript, like for example, conditional types. But honestly, the features that we've covered today are enough to get you started writing TypeScript code and having fun with static type checking on the front end and indeed the back end too. If there's anything glaring that I've missed, then let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to play around with TypeScript in React, then head over to my website, traintocode.com. I have this React TypeScript conversion course in here. It's free and you can do it in the browser. This is for developers who know a bit of React and who know a bit of TypeScript, and you just want a crash course in how to use React and TypeScript together. So check that out, the link is in the description below. And until next time, my name is James Charlesworth, and this is the Trains Code YouTube channel.